Hello everyone, Ken here, back with another video for you. Today I'm talking about why selling or sales skills are actually a really important part of data science. I recently read this book called To Sell is Human by Daniel Pink, and in it he talks about how selling is becoming a really important part, or it has become a really important part of almost all of the work that we do. You know, consulting, working as an analyst or data scientist, uh, a lot of these career paths have a strong selling component. And it's not a traditional sales of, of getting someone to buy your product, it's selling an idea, a message, or a vision. The more I thought about this, the more I realized that strong sales skills are, are actually a, a huge component of good data science work. So in the first part of this video, I'm gonna talk a little bit about why sales are so important within the data science field. And in the second part of the video, I'm gonna talk about some of uh, the tips that I've come across and some of the, the material that I've read that I think help you to convey your message and to be able to sell more effectively, again, within this realm of data science. As usual, if you enjoy this video, please hit that like button. And if you wanna see more content similar, similar to this, uh, please subscribe to my channel. So the first place that we actually sell in the data science field is during the interview process. We have to sell a potential employer on ourselves, our personality, our level of interest in the role, our likability. We have to sell them on our skill set, the tools that we know and our understanding of, of, of data science concepts. And we also have to sell our background, why the things that we've done in the past are relevant to a, a role that we're actually applying for. The second place that we sell is when we actually have the job and we're selling either a project we've done, a solution, or we're selling to our peers the methodology that we've used. We have to explain uh, coherently and concisely why we chose to go about solving a problem in a certain way and why we believe that it is the best course of action for anything. Of course there's back and forth and that's part of the selling process, but we, it is really important to be able to convey your reasons why and to get buy-in from your peers and from your superiors. The third place that you have to routinely sell in the data science realm is if you're a product owner, a manager, or a director, or even a, a normal data science and you're, and you're selling up the organization. You're selling data science as a concept, why we should be using more of it, why we should be uh, including more data science projects in the pipeline and in the budget. You also have to sell stakeholders on why a certain data science project is relevant to them, why they should uh, either use their resources, use their time to invest in this project, and the value that it can create for them. You know, kind of per peripheral to all of this, I've been doing some data science consulting work myself, and I have to use all three of these areas when, when I try and get a new project. So I have to sell my background, why I believe, you know, why me? As a, as a contractor. I have to sell the work that I've done, the project that I do, uh, you know, why I can create value in a specific, uh, in a specific concept for any of these companies. And then I have to sell data science as a whole and you know, why that is a valuable part of their organization, why they should invest in it in general. So as you can see, data science and sales are actually really intertwined uh, at every level within an organization. And you know, this is an important skill set to develop, to cultivate. It's not something that people are born with. It's, it's a learned ability. So going forward, I'm gonna show you five different ways where you can kind of enhance your ability to convey information, to sell people on your ideas and get buy-in from your organization, from your peers, etc. So all of these tips I've picked up from a couple different books. Of course, they're all linked in the description below. I am by no means a sales expert, but I have seen a lot of the concepts that I'm gonna present work in a data science setting, in a real world consulting setting. And I think that they're a little bit, uh, they're not super obvious. So they should be providing extra value to you. And you know they shouldn't be in the face of anyone that you're using them on. So the first tip that I would recommend whenever you're pitching an idea or a concept is to have others articulate the value that you provide. So when I'm in an interview and the interviewer asks me if I have any questions for them, I always ask them to, to look at my resume and to talk about some of the things in my background that they believe could really create value in the position that I'm applying for. So in this way, they're actually verbalizing the 
strong parts of my resume, which, you know, is programming them to believe that I am creating value. They are saying it themselves. It works the same if you're presenting research or presenting a solution to a problem in the workspace. You can ask your, you know, your boss or the business stakeholder to talk about a couple of the benefits of a new approach that you're using. It's really important that they are articulating the benefits because when you say something, you begin to believe it, especially if it's coming out of your own mouth. Uh, I think that this is really important even for yourself. If you're trying to improve your performance, if you're trying to, to build up self-esteem, talking to yourself, the things that you say um, are, are always heard by your brain. And it's important to say positive things. It's important to talk about the value that you create all the time. The second technique that I've found very useful is this concept of mirroring. A little history, our, our, our brain has what is known, uh, what are known as mirror neurons. So naturally we learn by mimicking other people's behavior. So if you want to be uh, liked by someone, if you want someone to uh, naturally connect with you, if you um, subtly mirror their behaviors, mirror their speech patterns, and mirror their, uh, their actions, that automatically builds rapport. So whenever I'm communicating with someone and they say an important point, I usually try to uh, say that point in their, their own phrasing back to them. One, that makes it clear that you're hearing what they're saying, and two, you're speaking the same language. Um, this can help kind of on the fringe, just when you're making a first impression, to really get someone to get on the same page as you. And that's one of the most important things with any sales, with any communication, is that you want everyone to be on the same page. Now, don't make it too obvious, you know, it, it, you'll, people will think that you're making fun of them if you're, you know, they're looking like it's actually in a mirror, so please don't do that. But any, any subtle mirroring, mirroring um, behaviors can really go a long way. The third tip, uh, which I think might be one of the most important ones, is to get consistent commitments over the course of a conversation or over the course of a sale. So. A lot of people think that when you ask for someone to buy your product or when you ask for someone to commit to, you know, to using a methodology, whatever, uh, that's when the sale is made. People call it closing for a reason. But if you accumulate small wins, you get people to say yes a lot in the course of that process, that's actually when the sale is being made. People are building up to a yes rather than just, you know, saying yes at a peak. So if you get someone to say, okay, I like this portion of it. Um, do you like this next step of the methodology? Do you like this next step of the methodology? And getting them to repeatedly say yes and agree with you on the lead up, there's a lot higher chance that they will agree with you on the big picture ask uh, when you make it. The fourth, the fourth tip or component of sales that I think is relevant here is to demonstrate value and to have some form of social proof. So. If you talk when, when you go in about some of the successes of your past projects or about you know, some little wins that you've had even with the, the stakeholder you're communicating with, that really goes a long way. That frames the scenario around past successes you've had and it relates the current uh, project to those past successes. So you always want to come in as if your time is valuable and your project is valuable. Uh, you don't want to make it seem like other things are higher priority than what you're working on. Um, you know, they very well might be, and that's part of a priorit prioritization discussion, but have pride in your work. Uh, if you don't have pride in your work, you don't believe in what you're doing, other people will see that and they'll be a lot less inclined to say yes to any requests that you make or to pursue work on the project that you're doing. Uh, the last tip that I would recommend uh, integrating into your data science and kind of sales tool toolkit here is that when you're speaking, uh, you should always try and elicit an emotional response. You want people to really feel the decision uh, rather than to just analytically think about it. While data science is extremely quantitative and we want it to continue to be like that, the nature of decision making isn't inherently quantitative still. People still make decisions with their gut and with their heart. And if we can align people's guts and hearts with the actual data and the value that our projects can create, that is an optimal scenario. So how do you create an emotional response? You do that through storytelling and you do that through visualization. So you can actually use pictures if you're doing a presentation. You can tell a really in-depth story where a person 
you know, feels the value that they're creating. You know, for example, um, if a, you know, product of, of mine or, or research that I'm doing could help improve 2%, um, you know, improve the, uh, you know, increase the mortality rate, or I guess it's decrease the mortality rate of a certain drug, you can talk about the hundreds of thousands of lives that are being saved just by an analytic adjustment. So you really want to hone in on, you know, that specific person, but also on the broader message about, you know, what makes your product, your analysis, your, um, the story that you're telling unique and meaningful to, to all of these people. So that's really it in terms of this, the sales tips that I would recommend associated with data science. In the comment section below, please let me know what you think. And I'd love to hear any stories about how you use uh, sales skills uh, in the data science field. As usual, thank you so much for watching and good luck on your data science journey.